rounded little finger of land extending out of Asia's mainland, pointing significantly toward Japan and the Pacific beyond. A nation not much larger than our state of Minnesota, but acre for acre, one of the most violently mountainous areas on Earth. Today, the capital city, Seoul, is largely restored, rising from the rubble of almost total destruction to become at least somewhat like her old self. The Capitol building wears a new dome, but nothing short of complete rebuilding will ever erase the battle scars in these walls. As Koreans today know it, the peace is an uneasy armistice in a divided nation. But with the dogged stoicism of a culture 4,000 years old, they go about the business of living, knowing as they do that for the living, there is no other course. In the markets, the scrap pile school of architecture prevails, but business is as colorful, noisy, and aromatic as it ever was. North of Seoul, the mountains rise in sharp volcanic disorder. Green foliage has returned to slopes once blasted bare by TNT and napalm, but at the summits, eyes still keep watch to the north. Along the demilitarized zone, or DMZ, and trench forces face one another across no man's land. Here, the armistice decreed, the armies would pull back from one another, forming a buffer zone among the mountains. Once again, Korea, the ancient mountain kingdom of Chosen, is in fact the land of the morning calm. But no one forgets June 25th, 1950. It was still dark, four o'clock on a Sunday morning. South Korean villages awoke to a world suddenly filled with noise and flame. The communists, made bold by months of small-scale raiding across the 38th parallel, had finally launched their undeclared all-out war of conquest. Half a world away in Washington, President Truman took immediate action, saying, in these circumstances, I have ordered United States air and sea forces to give the Korean government troops cover and support. Next day at the United Nations in New York, United States Representative Warren Austin made our position clear beyond doubting. The armed invasion of the Republic of Korea continues. The Republic of Korea has appealed to the United Nations for protection. I am proud to report that the United States is prepared to furnish assistance to the Republic of Korea. Spearheaded by tanks, the Red Forces had moved swiftly. In two days, they were attacking the capital city itself. Seoul fell the next day, June 28th. By June 30th, the Communists had crossed the Han River south of Seoul and fought through the rail city of Yongdong-po. With their heavy Russian-made tanks, they thrust aside South Korean resistance racing down the corridor which led through Anyang towards Suwa. Here the helpless and homeless gathered, only to be told they must flee still farther southward. Everywhere they saw their outnumbered countrymen rushing north to join the battle. Less than a dozen combat planes were available, several of them piloted by Americans. The Korean-American Volunteer Group what little you could do with only 10 aircraft, we did. Even as the Red Armor swept towards Suwon, advanced elements of the 24th Infantry Division were being airlifted to Korea from Japan. Their coming was known to the people. They were welcomed with cheering. 
Four days later, they met the enemy south of Osan, and the cheering was forgotten. I was scared. I didn't know it was going to be like that. The enemy was a lot stronger and better trained than we'd heard. Some guys thought we'd have it easy. It didn't work out that way. Retreat. The few heavier weapons covered each withdrawal as best they could. Where they had divisions, we had companies. Pull back, fight, pull back again. Four days and nights, nobody slept. We started with a good many green troops. Now anybody could still pack his gear, he was a veteran. to the south, four 24th Division troops and equipment were arriving by ship. Not enough, not nearly enough, but it was a start. Generals Walton H. Walker and William Dean had a tough assignment, undertake the work of several divisions with elements of only one. One day I looked up and there they was. Man, if I said those fresh troops look good, I'd be lying. They were beautiful. Not only just troops, but trucks, more heavy stuff, and tanks. We met our first red armor, 25 miles north of Tejan. Yokota Air Base, Japan. Our first large-scale bombing attack is mounted as more than 50 B-29s take off. The target, one saw, key North Korean port city. We wondered how much ACAC there'd be. There wasn't any at all. Communists moved south toward Tejan. We pulled back across the Kum River. This natural barrier offered another chance to buy time from the enemy. We took advantage of it. The Air Force was playing a leading role in our attempt to delay the communist advance. Lacking bases in Korea, F-80 jets adapted oversized wing tanks for the long flight across the Sea of Japan. Angel fire to Dofoot, over. Dofoot to Angel 5, request fire on enemy column due north, your position. Angel 5 to Dofoot, receive your transmission, we'll proceed, over. Dofoot to Angel 5, good luck. 